a wasteful Manchester United just got a very narrow win against Luton Town because no matter which stat you look at, whether it's position or attack threat map or XG, it all shows that United were awful in this game. We had so many chances to make this game an easy win. Bruno missed his one win chance, Garnacho missed his one win chance, even Dallo when he made that cross field run from that Onana pass, even he missed that one win chance. Not only these, we had other chances as well. It should not have been this close. The, this match was so terrible because our attackers couldn't finish and because the midfield had no control. We were getting dominated by Luton for for majority of the match and that's that's really disappointing to see. But at the same time, let's not forget the big picture. We are only three points behind Spurs who are in fifth and only five points behind Aston Villa who are in fourth. We have a really good chance that we can finish in European spots and maybe even the Champions League. Because if you look at Football Twitter now or other YouTubers, they're all going way too negative. They're all saying United are shit, that Ten Hag should be sacked, that that it's uh, embarrassing to play against like this with Luton. But they're all forgetting one thing. Luton away is not an easy game. This is, is the same Luton who battered Brighton, who won against Newcastle. Who even drew against Liverpool and they only lost 4 3 to Arsenal? They had such close games against top teams and we won against such a Luton. I am not here defending this, this play style, right? I am also not sat- satisfied with how we played. But we shouldn't forget that this is the United team which has won 4 in a row and are in the contention for top 4. I know top 4 isn't a trophy, but at this point of the season, we need something from this and they're trying to salvage it. The only players who can come out of this match with their heads held high are three, I would say. First is Rasmus Hoylin, who is the youngest player to score six in a row. And he has so many goal involvements in his last few games. It's crazy. But the sad thing about this, again, most of these goals weren't provided to him. It's something he made out of, made out for himself. Even the goal today, the first goal, was a looting mistake, which he pounced upon. And the second goal, it's not like Ganacho was passing the ball to him, right? The shot, the volley was off target and Hoyland had to proactively direct the ball towards the goal. That's Hoyland doing everything on his own once again. Our wingers are the type of players who do not create for a striker. And that is probably why there are links that Manchester United might buy someone like uh, Olise from Crystal Palace. Or, you know, Pedro Neto from Wolves, who are wingers who actually look to create for a striker. Unlike our wingers, who are much more interested in scoring goals. Kobe Menu was the only midfielder today who actually was worth his weight. Because Bruno had an awful game. Casemiro had an awful game. McTominay had an awful game. Menu, despite being the youngest of them all, he shows such calm-headedness, like such coolness throughout the whole match. I can, I could see most of the United team panicking in the game. But it was only Kobe who kept his cool, trying to pass neatly or trying to come out of dangerous spots safely. So Kobe is really important, but we have to remember he's only 18. We shouldn't overhype him and he should get enough rest. He is already getting a lot of game time and we should be thankful that we only have one game a week. That's why Kobe can still keep playing. Otherwise, he would have been subbed off way earlier or just kept on the bench. And the last player is Johnny Evans. I have been speaking about him before as well. That that yes, we probably shouldn't have signed Evans, right? But Evans has proved throughout this whole season how vital he is for a free transfer especially. He's He has been playing so good whenever he's been called upon. And today he was one of the major reasons why we, why we came out with a win. Because his performance was colossal. He showed his veteran experience and he showed how to defend a box properly. I don't think Evans is a long-term solution that I don't, in the sense that we shouldn't give him another contract. But at the same time, he is massive for this season and he will continue being massive as long as Martinez is injured or Maguire gets injured again or something. And now on the three players who were really bad, really disappointing. First is Bruno, our captain, who's not playing at his level. It's been a couple of months now where Bruno has been, you know, awful, to be honest. His passing is off, his shooting is off, his decision-making is off. 
if we had the Bruno who, you know, during his first one and a half years at United, Bruno probably would have had more than 10 goals this season alone. But we have seen how many easy chances he is missing. He had a one even chance he missed. Then he had had some wild shots which he is missing. So, I think Bruno is under a lot of pressure. Or he might be tired. Because this is not the Bruno that we know and we rely upon. So something needs to change with Bruno. Because he is a very important part for the rest of the season. And the other player, Casemiro. The problem with Casemiro is that he is not a bad player. We all know that. He's quality. The only problem is that the referees have marked him. As soon as he t- touches an opponent player, he immediately gets a yellow card. I know it's unfair that he gets targeted again and again because we see Rodri make 10 of these challenges each game and he doesn't get anything. But as soon as Casemiro touches an opponent player and they go down, it's an immediate yellow card. The so Casemiro is becoming a problem in the sense that it's not his fault. It's the referees being shit who keep targeting him. And the last player, Lindelof. Because, let's be honest, Lindelof isn't expected to play good and look back. It's not his role. The problem here is our medical department. I don't know what's going on with it. Shaw, uh, subbed off last week, comes to play this week, subbed off again. Martinez, he went down with the initial contact right with Kufal and the doctor allowed him to play again. And that probably worsened his injury. Next, Mount and Malaysia. We don't even know where they are. Mount, who's a 55 million uh, signing this season, a major chunk of our budget, he's nowhere to be seen. And we don't even know what's wrong with him. Whether it's a surgery, whether it's hamstring, whether it's ACL, no one knows. Same with Malaysia. No one knows what's going on with them. What I'm worried about the most is that if more players get injured, because we already don't have a substitute fullback. We don't have a substitute striker because Martial, once again, we don't know what's going on with him. There's so many injury-related problems at United and they keep happening. So you have to ask yourself, how can you expect Manchester United to play like a top team if they don't have their top players? Luke Shaw and Martinez, even Casemiro, are the base upon which United play well. If they aren't there, we will play awful. So with the top four race heating up, Aston Villa and Spurs both have a really difficult fixture in the next few game weeks. And they even have to play each other in the season. So there's a very solid chance that we can finish in the top four. But the biggest problem is our own fixture list. Because after next week to Fulham, we go to Man City in two weeks. And that might be the testing point of Eric Ten Hag. If we get embarrassed, like 5 nil, 6 nil, 7 nil, then Ten Hag might be in really, really, really big danger. And I'm not going to expect anything at Etihad. That's the point I'm at at the season. I'm not expecting anything from that game. If we get, get, if we get a win, I'll be surprised, to be honest. I'm not expecting it, but I'll be surprised. So let's see what happens at that point. Now, we already have a new CEO, but and we are going to get the new director of football, Dan Ashworth, from Newcastle. So there are changes happening at United. Do I think Ten Hag is getting sacked this season? I don't think so. I don't think Ten Hag gets sacked this season if he keeps getting results like these. I don't think Ineos is going to judge him on his brand of football for this season because we all can see the squad is really bad with these injuries. And there is no structure at United. So, what I'm going to guess is that Ten Hag gets at least this season at United. But next season, if this continues, I think he might be in danger at that point. Now, if you want to relive the McTominay header, last-minute header against Aston Villa, then you can watch this video right here where I talk about a narrow win against Aston Villa team, which gives us a a huge top-four boost. And I will see you all in my video next week. Goodbye.